Hello Chem 1. Today we'll take a look at some of the mathematical relationships between temperature, volume, and pressure. These equations are known as the gas laws. Let's get started. The properties of gases are dependent on four things. Pressure, temperature, volume, and the number of particles. Throughout this section, you might hear me refer to STP or at STP. What I'm saying is at standard temperature and pressure. A lot of times when we talk about gases, we talk about them at STP, which eliminates any of the changing in variables temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which is also 273 Kelvin. And standard pressure is one atmosphere, which is 760 millimeters of mercury. Anytime I would say at STP, you should assume that, that that is the temperature and pressure I'm talking about. We call these laws variable state gas laws. You can kind of think about them as a before and after. Basically, you have a gas and one of the variables undergoes a change and we want to calculate how that affects the other variable. Most of the time, it doesn't matter what units you're in as long as they're the same on both sides of the equation, except for temperature. Temperature has got to be in Kelvin because the Kelvin scale doesn't have negative values and won't mess with the math as we do these calculations. The first equation we're going to talk about is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law shows the relationship between pressure and volume. Pressure and volume is an inverse relationship, meaning as pressure increases, volume decreases. And this is something you understand. If you look down here at this piston, as we increase the pressure on the gas, it's going to take less volume. So as the pressure is high, the volume will be low. You even understand this if you squeeze a balloon and increase the pressure on the outside, it's going to decrease the volume of that balloon. The math for Boyle's Law looks like this, P1V1 equals P2V2. All right, let's try an example problem. It says the volume of a gas at 0.977 atmospheres is 300 milliliters. It's telling us the pressure and the volume before the change has taken place. So we're going to label that as P1V1. And then it says what is the new volume if the pressure is increased to 1.86? So this would be P2. We'd set this up as 0.977 times 300 equals 1.86 times V2. To solve this, we divide both sides by 1.86 and we get V2 by itself. And when we solve for V2, we'd see that it's 158 milliliters. Here's another example. We have a gas that's going from 4 liters down to 0.05 liters. And the initial pressure is 0.98. The key here is you have to make sure you label these things correctly. This 0.98 atmospheres is going with 4 liters. Meaning that if you make 4 liters V1, that this 0.98 has to be P1 because those two measurements go together. This volume here would be V2. We'd set this up and do the math and get 78.4 atmospheres. The next law we're going to talk about is Charles' Law. This shows the relationship between volume and temperature. This is a direct relationship, meaning when temperature increases, volume will also increase. This is something that you understand. This is why we don't heat closed containers of gas, because they will expand and create dangerous situations. Once again, if we had a closed system of, and a gas inside, if we added heat to that closed system, that gas is going to expand and take up more volume. As temperature increases, volume increases. The problems here are very similar. It says if a gas occupies 2.32 liters, so that would be V1, at 40 degrees, so that'd be T1, what's the new volume at 75 degrees, which would be T2? The thing we need to pay attention to here is that we're in Celsius. We cannot do gas law problems in Celsius. It has to be in Kelvin. So the first thing we need to do is convert to Kelvin. The equation is on your equation sheet, and if you look it up, you'll see that it's just simply adding 273. So we take 40 and add 273 to get 313, and we take 75 and add 273 and get 348 Kelvin. Now we're ready to set up a problem. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So V1 would be 232 over 313 equals V2 over 348. The easiest way to solve this problem would be to cross multiply. We're going to cross this over here, or in other words, we're going to multiply both sides by 348. This will cancel, and now we have 348 times 2.32 divided by 313, and that will give us V2, which will work out to be 2.58. You can always check your answer to make sure if it makes logical sense. Look, we have a volume of 232 at this temperature, and then the temperature went up by about 30 degrees, and guess what? 
our volume also went up. That's one way you can check to make sure you've done the math correctly. Here's another problem solving for temperature. Our V1 is 0.67, our T1 is 362 after converted to Kelvin, V2 is 1.12, and we don't know T2. In this case, we've got to get T2 out of the denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by T2. This will cancel. And then I'm going to multiply the other side by 362 and divide by 0.67. So times 362, that'll cancel this out, and then divide by 0.67, and that'll cancel that out, solving for T2. That answer would be 605 Kelvin, but it asked for the temperature in Celsius. So we'd subtract 273 and we'd get back to 332 degrees Celsius. The next gas law is Gay-Lussac's law. It is a relationship between pressure and temperature. As temperature increases, not only does volume increase, but pressure also increases. Once again, this is why we don't heat up closed containers of gas. It's dangerous. These practice problems look very similar to the last law, we're going to have to make sure we keep our temperatures in Kelvin so we don't have negative temperatures. You can see that we're going from 22 to 60 with our initial pressure, so P1 being 3.2. So our initial temperature is 22 and our final temperature is 60. We'd set this up, calculate for P2, and we get 3.61 atmospheres. Here's another quick example that's solving for T1. Notice that we get 135 Kelvin. We subtract the 273 to get our answer back to Celsius, which is negative 138. I hope you're starting to see that the math with these problems is not too difficult. As long as you identify the variables correctly and put them in these basic equations, you're going to get the right answer. All right, now that we know the three basic gas laws, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's law, now we're gonna talk about the combined gas law, which is taking all those gas laws and putting it into one equation. You can see we have Boyle's Law present, which is a relationship with pressure and volume. You can see that we have Charles Law present, which is a relationship between volume and temperature. And you can also see that we have Gay-Lussac's Law present, which is a relationship between pressure and temperature. So within this combined gas law, it's all the other three laws moved together. The way you're gonna identify these problems is that all three measurements will be present. So let's take a look. We got neon gas at 30 milliliters, so that's a volume. We're gonna call that V1. Then it says, something we talked about earlier but we haven't seen yet, at STP, that's telling me that we're at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, and that zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. So it can simply say at STP, and that tells you two variables right away. What is the new pressure, so we're looking for P2, if the temperature is increased to 30 degrees Celsius? So 30 plus 273 is 303 Kelvin, and decreased to 20 milliliters, so this would be V2. So lots of variables here to keep straight. Our P1 is one atmosphere, our V1 is 30, and our initial temperature is 273. Our P2 we do not know, our V2 was 20, and our second temperature was 303. At this point, we'd times both sides by 303. I would probably simplify this term, and then I'd divide both sides by 20 to get P2 by itself. And you should come up with 1.66 atmospheres. This equation's handy when you have more than one variable changing in a scenario. For the sake of time, I'm gonna move past this one right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the last one. This is another basic combined gas law problem. If you look at the last one here, there's a couple things to note. First of all, it gives you the first scenario, which is V1, T1, and P1. But then it says correct to STP. What that's telling you is the second scenario should be standard pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury, and standard temperature, which is 273 Kelvin. Then we just solve for V2, which works out to be 232 milliliters. Anytime you see something that says correct to STP, it's telling you two variables. I know we just threw a lot of equations at you just now, but a lot of the equations are very similar. All these equations can be found on the equation sheet that you were given at the beginning of the year. You'll never have to memorize them. You just need to focus on identifying the variables, putting them in the right spot in the equation, and calculating your answer. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure you ask me. Definitely try the practice problems. Keep up the good work. We'll see you soon.